And welcome to a new episode of the Acoustics Podcast. I'm your host, Acoustics Editor in Chief Ian White. Our topic today is going to be one of my personal favorite brands uh, right now in the hi fi space. If you look over my shoulder, you'll notice a loudspeaker from Q Acoustics. Q Acoustics has actually been around now for a number of years. And today's topic is actually going to be a brand new series of loudspeakers that the brand is launching today. April the 13th, the day this podcast is being broadcast for the first time. And we're honored to have Alex Monroe, who's joining us today from Scotland, of all places. He is the brand director for Q Acoustics. Good morning, Alex. Hi, good day. Now, I'm very familiar with the brand because I've been a customer since almost day one. Um, I've always had a value approach to high-end audio. Um, and in my past life, when I wasn't editor-in-chief at Acoustics, and I wrote for other publications. Q Acoustics was a brand that actually has become extremely popular with the mainstream press um, in the U.S. in particular. Uh, when I was at publications like Gear Patrol, we covered Q Acoustics on a regular basis, and the readership you know, tend to respond in a very positive way. And over the last few years here at Acoustics, we have covered Q Acoustics with both, obviously, features and reviews. But, you know, I don't know that a lot of audiophiles actually know the history of the brand and where it started and who the people behind the brand actually are. And I'm wondering if we could start you know, from that perspective. Sure. Q Acoustics was founded in 2006. So we're now a precocious 17 year old teenager. <laughs> I have one of those. But, but I'd like to represent that we have a lot more audio experience and a bit more maturity than that would suggest. Our first products were the 1000 series, but now we're at the 5000 series, which I'm going to talk about today. Above the 1000 series products is our premium concept ranges, where we really began to tackle reducing distortion in speakers and improving their signal to noise ratio, which is not something people talk about a lot in speakers. Uh, and quite often that's because it's it's not very good and they don't like to have it measured or have it discussed. But it's something that we're bringing out into the open as a very important quality of a loudspeaker. But it hasn't only been a story of progressive development in the same area. We've expanded before these core products and also produced powered and active speakers capable of reproducing the highest quality of wirelessly streamed content. We have a line of installation speakers and systems with a lot of unique features, and we are constantly striking a balance between reproducing music and the sound for video. Now, uh, one of the things that I think makes the brand very unique from both an editorial perspective and also as a consumer is that Q Acoustics has always always had a range of affordable loudspeakers. And it's something that I think has sort of really caught the attention of the market because obviously over the last five years, there's been an influx of affordable loudspeakers from a lot of high-end brands, especially from like British brands, companies based in the UK and Scotland, and obviously some brands um, in other parts of Europe and North America. But Q Acoustics is kind of known as one of the highest value brands that exists in the high-end space. And I know that a lot of people have always wondered, how is the company able to make such good loudspeakers um, that are still that affordable? Really, it is just experience and uh, engineering know-how. Uh, and uh, um, we started very much as a British brand and have become more international over the years. And uh, you know what got us started was that there was a gap created in the UK market by one of the established brands losing their founders and quickly losing their way and starting to lose their substantial market share. One of the first people involved in Q Acoustics is a world-class designer who's still with us today. He and one of our commercial team at the time had direct experience of working with the receding brand. So this gave us a starting point of how to do it better than they had and how to avoid the pits that they'd fallen into. Now, do you think, I know that 
every market has its own kind of quirks. Do you think that the brand's focus on value and performance um, has played better over in the UK and Europe or North America so far? Um, as I said, we started in uh, the UK and then Europe, but it's really resonating in the US as well. And essentially what it's about is exceeding the expectation of your customers. Uh, and that's an important tenet, no matter what business you're in, but particularly so now that there's more distance selling and that uh, people are opening a carton and they're ready to be thrilled or they're ready to be disappointed. And uh, the cost of them being disappointed uh, and returning the product is very significant. And it's clearly, it's a lost customer. So it's something we want to avoid at all costs. So them receiving something that's a bit better than they expected, uh, and the value for money stakes it is a very important aspect. Now, Q Acoustics exists under a larger umbrella under Armor Home, which is, I, I guess, the, the, the parent company. And you know, the other aspects of the, of, of the larger company are really a cable manufacturer and a world-renowned uh, phono cartridge maker. But um, the company doesn't really make its own electronics. And, you know, and I know that, I mean, for example, the, the 3050i, which is part of the 3000 series that are sitting over my shoulder, um, I get so many questions on a monthly basis from readers wanting to know which electronics, you know, we recommend with, with your speakers. Um, I'm curious what, you know, the company likes to use during its own testing, what I guess the employees tend to like to, or enjoy with their own speakers, you know, which brands of electronics have essentially been really popular over the years uh, with the speakers? Uh, as a speaker guy, I've never really believed that the difference between competently designed amplifiers is as great as the amplifier manufacturers would like us to believe. But I, I really like products from Marantz, uh, Arcam, Cambridge Audio, uh, and NAD. Um, we, we've also used Name quite a bit. Uh, we were very, very flattered when Ken Ishiwata uh, took one of our products on tour when he was launching a new Marantz amplifier. And uh, you know that, that in itself was uh, a great accolade to see that done. Yeah, he was a he was a supremely talented guy. I was fortunate to meet him once many years ago before he passed away, and uh, so that, that's actually the fact that he used uh, Q acoustic speakers with him when launching one of his Marantz products is, in fact, actually uh, quite an honor to say the least. Um, what I now, do strongly believe in is the effect from a well designed speaker cable. Uh, as you mentioned, we have a sister brand called QED, who are fifty years old this year. And they were there and leading the field when specialist speaker cables were being invented. But not only that, they actually took the time and investment to find out why certain configurations work better than others. And uh, the products today are really based upon the uh, things that they learned all those years ago. Well, as, okay, so over the years, I've developed a reputation for being the uh, affordable cable person, and um, I, I have, and, and nothing annoys audiophiles more than when Hi-Fi magazines write about cables. And you know, I have written quite a bit about QED over the years because I've used the products for many years, and because they really kind of fit into you know my personal beliefs in regard to you know cables. And you know, and we've taken a lot of heat over the years when we write about you know certain cables, and understandably so. But you know, I know from my own personal experience that QED has great synergy with all of the Q acoustic speakers because I have a pair of the older 3020s, I have a pair of the 3030Is, the 3050Is, the center channel speaker. So you know, I've had a chance to try QED um, with almost all of the speakers that I've had in house, and they've all worked well. So I, I definitely agree with you. Um, on that point. Now, today's topic is kind of exciting for us because, um, you know, we're very appreciative of the, of the opportunity to talk about a brand new series of loudspeakers um, that Q Acoustics is la um, are launching today, actually, on April the 13th. Now, one of the things that makes the new 5000 series unique from my perspective is that 
the company sort of has the entry level with the 3000 series covered. You have sort of the, I guess, mid to top of the market covered with the concept series, but you've always kind of had a bit of a gap in between the two. And, and, and just like in, in looking at the, um, the 5040s that, that I have under review, it, it's really clear to me that there have been some advancements in both the driver design, um, but also the design of the speakers overall, that it, it seems like this particular series, the 5000, is meant to fill a very important gap because there, there have been comments over the years that right now high-end audio is either at the extreme or it's at the entry level. And it's been sort of the middle that has suffered as a result because consumers will either go for the lowest cost option or they'll go for the most expensive in some cases. Um, so can you kind of give us right now sort of a, an overview of the 5000 series um, and how it kind of fits into the, you know, the Q Acoustics lineup overall? Well, as you say, it's been long awaited. And as far as we've had this big gap between uh, our uh, entry level products and our concept range. And uh, it's enabled us to trickle down technology from concept, but also come up with some unique and very different technology that we could introduce through this new series. And um, you know, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about how we actually go about the design process. Absolutely. And uh, after the purpose of the product, and its positioning has been established, quite early on, one or more visual designs are created that will accommodate the proposed acoustic design. And uh, once one is chosen, that's very much the inspiration for the team. Having a long-standing designer ensures that your ranges all visually relate to each other. Yeah. And just as importantly, he completely understands the shapes, structure, and materials that are most sympathetic to reproducing sound. And that's rare in designers. The, um, the kind of things that we were able to do with the concept range that we've now trickled down into 5,000 is uh, the method of bracing that we call point-to-point -point bracing. And traditionally, a, a brace was just like a shelf that they put into the cabinet right. somewhere uh, uh, halfway up. And uh, that's a very misunderstood approach. And uh, we spent a lot of time with a lot of sensors across uh, uh, an experimental cabinet to find precisely the right points that we should join together in order to minimize the vibrations coming from the cabinet. Going back to that theme of us always wanting to stop the vibrations from the cabinet that are effectively like distortion on the signal that you're listening to. A second thing that we uh, was invented in uh, for concept that we brought into this range, into the uh, floor standing products, is Helmholtz pressure equalization. And that's where you've got uh, a tower cabinet and uh, when a tower cabinet is vented it uh, can behave like an organ pipe and there's this effect in speaker design they talk about it they actually call it organ piping where it uh, reaches a resonance due to the length of the cabinet and its uh, acoustic makeup in terms of where the port is located etc and uh, what we've done with Helmholtz pressure equalization is used tubes to connect the points of high pressure with the points of low pressure in the cabinet in order to neutralize that organ piping effect. So for a floor stander, that's extremely important and a big step forward. The tweeters that uh, come into uh, 5000 uh, were developed originally for the concept 305090, which is a relatively recent addition to concept. And they're hermetically sealed and mechanically isolated. And uh, they um, uh, enable us to locate the drivers very close together because they uh, use uh, small magnet assembly and neodymium magnet assembly 
which uh, means that they uh, take up a small amount of space. And yet again, mechanical isolation prevents vibrations being transmitted into the cabinet. Something that's been really a focus for us is that we're, we completely understand that people live in a real world and that they um, uh, don't have beautiful, symmetrical, acoustically treated listening rooms. Right. They have their living space, which may have windows down one side, it may have no carpet, it may have curtains, it maybe doesn't have curtains, it maybe has blinds. So we've uh, uh, been aware that you may not have the ability to locate your loudspeakers in a symmetrical uh, positioning, and you may have to locate them close to a wall. So throughout uh, all of our loudspeaker products, uh, we've used a location adjustment because they have rear-facing ports and we provide foam bungs to enable you to uh, change the bass response of the speaker. And uh, when you insert the foam bung, uh, you would do that if the speaker was located within eight inches of the rear wall or close to a corner. And it reduces the amplitude of the bass but it extends it downward so that you can Im improve the bass performance uh, and get rid of any boominess that you would have from having it too close to a wall. Um, the driver technology in the 5040 and the 5050 um, are obviously a completely different driver from the three series. And I'm wondering if you could touch on the driver because that's the one thing that I think for a lot of people will explain my review when it airs around the time of Expona, why the 5040 sounds so much more um, impactful, um, why the, the, the base, in my opinion, like the, the base performance is significantly different um, in the 5000 series than even like the, the 3050i that are behind me. And I'm wondering if you could explain the changes that have been made, especially in terms, in terms of the base drivers. This uh, is a specific innovation to 5000 series. Uh, and it, essentially, it's because the profile of a base mid driver has always been a compromise. Uh, when you get a straight cone profile, it has benefits at the base frequencies, but it exhibits undesirable breakup modes that can restrict its use at the higher frequencies. And a bass speaker isn't like a piston. In classical terms, you would think of it being like a piston, but we actually ask it to operate higher than it, it would feel it would be able to do as a piston. So um, uh, cones have come in different shapes. And this is a very sophisticated development because um, the alternative uh, to a straight cone is a flared cone. And it's a better option to provide controlled cone breakup towards the higher frequency, but the flare shape will not hold its rigidity at low frequencies. So the profile of the uh, continuous curved cone, it exhibits the best of both of these and a bit more. It was achieved by starting with a model of a part spherical profile, then taking into account the material properties of each of the soft, soft parts, the cone, the coupler, the surround, the spider, the voice coil, and that had to be employed to achieve an accurate alignment between the measurements and the simulation results that we were getting. Then we moved to a slightly different cone shape, which was a double radius profile. We've started with a single radius and we've moved to a double radius profile. And we gradually added to that till it became a multiple radius shape forming, forming this continuous curve cone. And if you uh, combine that with copper clad aluminium wire, on a large glass fiber former, you have a very special driver indeed. Now, the the, the 5000 series um, 
for, for, for starters, has five new models. And so um, there's the 5010, the 5020, the 5040, the 5050, and I, I believe the center chat channel is uh, 5090. That's um, correct. Okay. Will so, there be a subwoofer designed specifically for the 5000 series? Because one of the things that has made the 3000 series so popular is the fact that you can mix and match the bookshelves and the 3050i and the subwoofer to create a number of different 5.1 um, type of systems. And, and, then, and that was the one thing I noticed in the early literature that there wasn't a new subwoofer um, in the 5000 series. And there's also not, I know some people are going to ask us, um, can, these, can these products be used like an Adobe Atmos type system with height channels? Okay, uh, good questions. The, um, firstly, we're moving away from the idea of having range specific subwoofers. And uh, we did that first with a subwoofer we call the QB12. And it's the beginning of a family uh, which will go uh, downward in size uh, because the QB12 is quite a big beast. And uh, we will uh, make these available in order to work with uh, a number of different ranges, not to be specific to one range uh, and to share its com cosmetic because a subwoofer is, um, is, is rarely seen. Uh, it's not uh, to be brought out and uh, on show uh, if it can be avoided. So we feel that having a non-generic set of subwoofers uh, to be able to combine with each of the ranges is a better way forward. So there will be more subwoofers in the future uh, but not specific to 5,000. In terms of uh, uh, a, a vertical loudspeaker, uh, in order to uh, do Atmos uh, or something of that nature, um, I think that uh, uh, we would very much like to do that, um, but we don't just want to do it as a box ticking exercise. Right. We, we want to do something that moves the uh, immersive sound idea forward. And uh, we've got some ideas, so um, uh, it won't come uh, immediately after this range, but uh, it is something we're working on. Okay. Now, readers will want to know, because I mean, we, we have been extremely bullish over the last few years on the 3000 series, and for obvious reasons. I mean, they're beautifully made speakers, they're built really well, especially especially at the price point, and the sound quality. It's really hard to find fault with them, and also the fact that um, they're very easy to drive with a very wide range of sort of uh, electronics. I think that's one of the things that has made Q Acoustics actually really popular with a lot of people in a lot of markets is that you don't have to necessarily invest in a massive stack you know, of separates. You don't need a huge power amplifier and a separate preamplifier. A lot of the brands that you mentioned, like Cambridge Audio and Name and Arcam and NAD, I mean, I've used NAD with the 3050i for almost two and a half years. Um, you know, Consumers like the fact that they can essentially build a, a, a simple one box plus the speakers type of system around your products. Um, but for people who are sort of looking at the 3000 series and now discovering as of today that you now have a 5000 series, um, aside from the actual technical differences that readers, because readers can really learn about that from our stories and the reviews, but what do you think as a brand director um, really differentiates the 5000 series from the 3000 series products? Thicker cabinet walls, bigger and better drivers, uh, absolutely superb tweeters, four brand new finishes, and uh, you can hear the effect of the new drivers in the extraordinary extended bass performance yeah. and the driver integration. The baffle fronts are laminated with a layer of butyl rubber and black acryl acrylic trim not only to provide a damping layer to suppress vibration occurring in the baffle, but to offer an eye-catching contrast to the cosmetically clean front presentation uninterrupted by any fixings. Who would you say, we ask this of every 
company, who would you say is the typical Q Acoustics customer? Because like in many ways, um, based on the number of years I've been an audiophile and the various brands that I've owned over the years, um, Q Acoustics was probably not designed for me, but over the years, I've discovered that I like the brand's products so much that they've actually replaced more expensive speakers. I'm not going to name the brands, but they've replaced more expensive speakers, you know, that I've been using in my own systems. And, you know, I just find that the, the value proposition that the company offers is really unique because in, in my mind, I mean, Wharfdale would be a natural sort of rival to Q Acoustics. I mean, two UK based brands that, you know, produce very high value um, loudspeakers, bookshelf and floor standing that are affordable. But who do you think the typical customer is? Because I, I actually think that the customer has changed. Um, and especially having just gone through the pandemic, um, obviously in North America and in the UK, I feel like the, the market has shifted somewhat. And I'm curious who the company thinks is their customer base. Well, we hope it's not an, a narrow body of people. Um, you know, we we genuinely set out to uh, please as many people as possible. And uh, I uh, receive quite a few uh, letters and emails and contact from our customers. And um, they do uh, represent quite a broad church. Uh, clearly, you know, value for money uh, is part of that, even if it's getting up to a sort of seven or eight thousand dollar speaker. It's still representing value for money compared with what you could pay if you were going to um, get a similar performance elsewhere. In our view, one of the last topics I'd like to cover is that we get a lot of questions from readers about you know how are certain brands able to make their loudspeakers so affordable and you know and audiophiles love to throw out you know the you know where a loudspeaker is made as the end all be all answer but at, but at the end of the day q acoustics has been able for a long time to manufacture really high performance loudspeakers that are affordable and if it was so easy everyone would be doing it but the truth of the matter is you know most brands have not been able to make you know, high performance, affordable loudspeakers. And in my mind, it's probably harder as a brand to produce things that are more affordable, that are even better quality than it is obviously, you know, cost no object like products, like like the concept series. And, you know, I mean, because to me, to make something that's more affordable, better has to be harder. Okay. Um, if you think of all the great, sports teams they've not been uh, uh, come around as a result of one great player they generally have a number of great players that come around all at the same time so the sort of system engineering element of making sure we've got the right elements combined there's a lot of innovation in q acoustics and um i've been around long enough to know that uh, there's real innovation and there's marketing innovation. And I can assure you, ours are real. Uh, despite the fact that um, uh, we're a young brand, we have a lot of experience under our belts uh, and have been down some avenues in the past. Uh, and uh, we know the right ones to choose now. So, you know, I think it's experience, it's drive, it's engineering excellence, and also, you know, we have some great retail partners. Uh, for example, Crutchfield have agreed to be the exclusive partners for this range during the launch period. And we regard that as a, a, as a great compliment. So next time anyone's buying speakers, we very much hope that we'll have, you'll have these on your shortlist. So, so um, here's a question that I know that people are going to write in afterwards. You guys did such a great job um, with the 20 um, wireless Bluetooth speaker because it has been one of the, the best rated of all the Bluetooth speakers on the market for literally what the last year plus. I mean, if you look at, I mean, it made the top of our list. It made the top of almost every other mainstream publications list. Do you foresee going forward that something like the 5000 series will eventually have active 
wireless versions because just that's just sort of the way the market seems to be headed. I think it's inevitable, but there's a very important aspect to this, and that is that uh, we don't believe in taking an existing model and activating it. We like to design uh, a powered or active speaker from the ground up. Uh, and that's for, for very important reasons in as far as um, when you are uh, able to get straight to the terminal of the drivers, when you're able to um, uh, have four or six different amplifiers uh, all specifically designed to uh, cater for the driver that they're driving, when you're able to have a much more complex crossover uh, that's uh, done at uh, low voltage rather than at high voltage, where uh, you know distortions can emerge uh, due to overloading, etc., uh, you, you have so much more freedom of design. So we. Our belief is to, to take an existing passive model and activate it is not the right answer. But uh, I'm sure that you're right that in the future, there will be ranges of speakers rather like the um, 5000 or 3000 or some of the concept products uh, that all of them are powered or active. And I will be first in line. Um... <laughs> Because uh, the, I have a review of the concept uh, 30 that will have already been published by the time this video actually appears. And for those who are interested in a reference quality stand mounted loudspeaker, uh, please read my review of the Q Acoustics Concept 30 because it is one of the best loudspeakers I've had a chance to review in many, many years. And so that's a testament to the company that it has managed to effectively create some of the best value loudspeakers on the market but it's also creating some of the best, truly high-end, you know, statement level speakers that one can buy. And um, my West Highland Terrier was absolutely enthralled with the stand. And I say that with a bit of sarcasm, um, but, you know, I mean, I think that that's one of the things that actually really kind of um, makes the company, the q Acoustics, really unique is that, you know, there's no shortage of competition in the loudspeaker market. You know, I mean, there's so many brands, but, the company has, to its credit, managed to sort of stay on everyone's radar, if I can use a U.S. expression, for really a long time. Because really, I mean, I have been writing about Q Acoustics now for well over five, almost six years. And in my mind, like when you when you mentioned at the, the beginning of the broadcast when the brand actually started, I don't think I even knew that. I, I, I think I think in my mind, this has been a brand that has been you know, releasing high quality speakers for the last, you know, six, six, seven years at the most in my mind. And, you know, to the brand's credit, I have replaced a lot of speakers in my existing collection with Q Acoustics models. So, and I think that, you know, for me, I mean, I'm, you know, just as, as an editor's opinion, I think the brand makes some excellent products. And um, without giving too much away from my review, um, if, you were, if you were considering the 3050i, you might want to read my review of the uh, 5040. Yeah, the, 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 the Q Acoustics has definitely upped their game in a very, very big way. Um, Alex, I want to thank you for joining us today. I know because we have a rather big time zone difference being in the US and yourself being in Scotland. Um, I also want to remind readers that in the description box below, there will be links to both our news coverage of the 5000 series but also where you can actually purchase the 5000 series from crutchfield.com here in the US. And I believe um, you can find out all the other information in the um, description box below. But Alex, I want to thank you once again for your time. And Acoustics readers, we have reviews of the 5020 coming from Jeremy Sakura, the budget audio filer. And you can find him, his account on Instagram. Jeremy has one of the fastest growing accounts um, in audio on Instagram. And you can read my review of the 5040, which will be very engaging to say the least. Um, below on the, you'll be able to find it on the website um, about a week after this broadcast airs. So Alex, once again, thank you. And we look forward to more discussions with you as the year progresses. It's been a pleasure. Look forward thank to you. it too.